Good evening, viewers. Uh, my name is Otumba Hashimola Bode uh, The program about to start is your regular one. There's a one on one with Otumba Hu. I must start by apologizing that uh, due to some technical uh, problem, as you know, it happens all over the place. Uh, we are unable to uh, start this program at the scheduled uh, advertised time to everybody. However, we are here. We are about to. Uh, I mean, we are starting the program now. And um, tonight, like all other nights, <laughs> you know, I always have a special big, big fish. I have someone in the studio tonight. Uh, well, let me start by saying she's uh, my junior, my daughter, my sister, <laughs> my friend, my confidant, but she seniors me oh, in wow. this business of uh, uh, journalism, media, and that is the truth. Uh, every time I bring anybody on board that I know, I will admit it. I'm not going to take that away from them. It's not that like we're going to get anything special for it. Tonight I have a lady who most of you must have seen many times, uncountable times uh, on uh, television. And the, the one that I know she is extremely popular is the one that uh, every time we go to parties, engagements, uh, places, say, ah, that's Priscilla, ah, that's, you know, they always, they know her outright because the, the number of years we've been together on, um, on uh, uh, you decide on NTV Indeed. many years yes and uh, a lot of people will say wow this is not too bad you know tonight I she's on my program Indeed. she's especially invited here and uh, I, I will try and describe who Priscilla is again <laughs> uh, she's one of the versatile queen of media award-winning uh, journalist broadcaster she's a, a producer anchor of the one of the popular program on on ben tv the woman show for, she was there for many years and um also she's a regular contributor also sometimes she also anchors and uh, you decide where we were most of the time been together and uh, she's also a contributor to a popular program also on TBC weekend that is journalist hangout. Uh, I think that's usually on weekends. Yes, it's on Fridays. Friday on Fridays evenings now. at seven thirty. And uh, she's also recently found by another uh, new <laughs> television station, GNTV. Um, and I, I will not be able to finish because otherwise it's going to eat in introducing this wonderful uh, lady who is going to eat in into the time. But I'm going to get her also to just do maybe one minute additional information tonight it's my pleasure having you here priscilla we've come a long way we have thank you for having me sultan but you i'm blushing and um thank you i'm i'm very humbled for by your your introduction there thank mm. you very much it's a pleasure to be here tell us a little bit about uh do not see, do not repeat what i've said just something <laughs> i have not said about you a little bit about what you haven't said about me yes okay um what is there to say i'm i'm nigerian um i i enjoy um what i do discussing um current political affairs and and current affairs you know um 
across Africa and of course here in the UK. Mm. Um, and, I've, and I've absolutely loved working with you over the years. It's been fun. I miss you, I must confess. I miss you these days because I don't... <laughs> I'm also blushing now. <laughs> I don't see much mm. of you anymore. But, um, but, but yeah, there, there's, there's not much to say about me, save for what you see is what you get. Mm. Mm -hmm. I also want to use this opportunity because, uh, not that I'm advertising anything about myself, I they, then, then come on the third of uh, March, that was my birthday. And I also remember uh, on the 5th of March last year, you and Lady Yemi Akinola. Oh, we had fun. You were the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the MCs that were, you know, when I celebrated my 70th. And uh, this year you, you wrote a very emotional something to me. Oh. And I, jo and I also want to <laughs> pray that you will not only get to 70, 71, you'll be 81. Yay. As, well as, as long so as the world is still peaceful, I don't mind being around uh, to that uh, length uh, of time. As long as it's a peaceful so, place. Um, but but let me let me take a moment to say, um, you know, you you mentioned there that last year you celebrated your seventieth, mm. and you know I wanted to put something on that Facebook page. I wanted to write "fine boy, no pimples," but then I thought, oh. Let, let me be respectful because some may not understand. Um, you may be 70, but you're the youngest 70 year old I know. Um, you know, first of all, you don't look, you don't look 71. But um, I mean, you're a joy to be around. You're, you're, oh. you're so much fun. It's Thank unreal. You. And if you don't say, you know, I'm 70, 71, um, we will not know that. And it's, and it's oh. so nice to... You know, so happy birthday. It's nice to know you. And I, I honestly, sincerely hope um, from my heart that I can be like you. You will. <laughs> when I'm that age, you know, I'll be able to fit in with the younger you will. ones. You will. Don't worry. You're, <laughs> you're on your way there. <laughs> Priscilla, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And again, like I said, uh, we come a long way together in this area of media business. Indeed. I want to start you tonight with a couple of emotional areas of my passion things that bothers me you know me by now mm. and i genuinely look at everybody's face and i say you know what if we endured the inhuman treatment of the four five hundred years ago and we survived it and we now uh, got the we got liberated about hundred and something years ago in africa uh, and then we got our independence about 50 something years ago in Africa. Mm -hmm. And here we are. We're still displaying. This is my, it might be an indictment, but this is the truth. We are still displaying mm -hmm. a huge amount of uh, incapacity. You know, we are, we are not capacity, uh, we, we don't have the capacity, we don't have the ability to run. A good government let me finish we have a situation like when you're looking for poverty poverty is in europe absolutely is in germany is mm. in holland is in belgium is in the uk here what did they do different they mask it they cover it they make sure that everybody has something to take home can sleep close their eyes benefit from the little wealth they have what exactly is wrong with us when now when you look at a situation you as a mother dapshi what's your take on this how do you feel wow <laughs> i feel as though you've asked three questions in one yeah, please um so let me try and take it one at a time um dapchi you know to think that dapchi could happen in 2018 after the experience Chibok. of Chibok in 2014. Um, it's, it's beyond devastating um, for the nation. And I also believe it is uh, highly embarrassing, especially when you know, we see our security um, agencies now beginning to say, oh, we were, we were handed over to the police. The police are saying, no, it wasn't our responsibility. Um, you know, th those aspects of, of what has happened in Dapshia are, are really um, tragic to, mm. to, to Nigeria, you know, and, and, and more so to the government of the day. It's a pity um, that 
we have a government um, that Ni they had so much goodwill. Nigerians, when it came to the issue of security, Nigerians absolutely believed that there will be a turnaround, there will be a change. Even if all other areas were to fail, but the area of security should not you know, be, be an equal failure. And unfortunately, in spite of the, the, the headlines or the announcements of technical defeat or you know, um, um, confiscating flags and Korans and what have you. Um, the reality and the truth is that, uh, you know, these problems are still very much in existence. And not only that, but they, they appear to be increasing. Um, we, we, we seem to go from one degree um, of terror to another. And, you know, these things are happening on innocent, innocent, citizens who are just concerned about their daily lives, who are concerned about, um, you know, their family and, and, and how to earn a, a decent living. Mm. And, and they're having their lives being cut short. Um, yes, accidents happen. Yes, things happen that we don't expect. But there is an expectation and a demand and, a, and especially a responsibility on the government of the day to, to do something. Um, and we're not, Nigerians are not, um, are not getting that. Is it present. the case that we are not really learning or we just neglect or we, we just show that we don't, we don't care, we don't, it doesn't concern me because I don't want to tri tribalize this particular topic. It's, it shouldn't you know, be. How much I put into uh, when it comes to social setting, the Absolutely. welfare of the people ever since I've been in media, if there's anything at all, it bothers me a lot because... Uh, I started by saying, if our great great grandfather, the last four or five hundred years, selling us to slavery, and uh, I'm, I'm coming to that aspect yeah, of what you yeah, said just, earlier. Please, you know, um, I, but but you know, the, regarding what you just asked there, I, I wouldn't say that Nigerians don't care. Um, I, I don't. I, I believe they do, and I believe that many are are, are pained. But I think it's it's the failings. It's with those who you know, have the responsibility. Who are those people? Are they not Nigerians? Are they not from the, the representative of these people? Are they not from Nigerians? Well, they are, but, they, uh, uh, but you know, it, it's, it's, I, I, I don't, I, there is, there is a, an absolute lack of empathy, a demonstration of empathy. Um, they, they are worried on their side. For instance, let's take the visitation of Mr. President. The fact that he's not been able to visit because, you know, with, with the violence and, and the killings and, and the, the, the bloodshed has been going on for a considerable amount of time. And, um, and, and it's been going across states. Um, and, and, you know, there is, a, there, there, there is a failing in demonstrating the empathy. There is a, a failing on the part of government to not only empathize with those but to also condone with them, to say, we, you know, we, we, we feel your pain. We are sorry about what has happened, or we will, we will do better. And I, think, and I think that particular aspect is an aspect that, you know, is affecting um, a lot of Nigerians. Now, you know, going back to what you said earlier, when you were asking, effectively saying, what is our problem? Mm. Um, why can't we do better? We've yeah. been liberated for over 100 years. We, you know... I, I will respond to, to that, to, you know, thus. If we look at the psychology of, of um, a lot of Africans, mm. um, we need to understand something. As people of African origin, we have been through a lot. Yes, the Jews have also been through a lot. Yes, there was a war at some point in Europe. We've, you know, the world has gone to One time these people were also taken wars. as a slave. They, they too, I know, I know. But, but, China you know, used to be a colony of uh, Great Britain. I, I am aware. Um, America? I, I am aware. So, please. Um, but, you know, we need to look at the psychology of, of um, the, the man or the woman of African origin. Um, we, we must not ignore the, the, the fact that our, our issues of, you know, slavery is one thing. But ever since slavery was over, we may not have had that physical slavery, but the mental slavery has continued. Not just the mental slavery, the brutality of our history, 
the the attack of our persons, the um, the downplaying of our abilities and capabilities, the the continuous um, narrative of saying that we are we are not capable, even though we are, um, the taking away um, of our resources, um, and continually. Um, saying that, you know, well, you're human, but you're not human enough to be able to do, to look after yourself. We are here to help you. We can help you by, you know, aid, or we can help you in this manner. But really, um, what is happening is that their um, minerals, if you like, are, are being taken away from them. So, you know, when we look at the psychology of what we have been through as a people or what we continue to go through as a people, uh, we need to take control. It is down to us to rewrite that, to not only, um, you know, change the narrative, but rewrite and ensure that for the coming generation, they begin to understand themselves in a different way. Um, you know, th this generation as it is now, the one pr previous and the one now that, the, the, you know, where we're at today, we, we've already lost that battle. <laughs> Because it's happened. Mm. Um, and on a daily basis, it matters not whether you live in Europe or you live in the Americas or whether you're in Asia or you're in Africa. As a man of, or woman of, Africa, of, of African descent, you are going to experience some form of attack. Be that against your person, against your mind, against your, your gifts, against your talents, against... You name it. So as a people, it is, we, we have been through a whole lot. And unfortunately, we have also contributed to the continuing of, uh, of our abuse. Now and you are talking what I want to hear. And I will tell you why. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> I'm struggling to agree with you. And I'll quickly say this to you. If it were a situation, 2018, that uh, none of us, as a people, mm -hmm. we take a substantial part of the patrimony away, hide it and go and buy three houses in Golders Green or go to somewhere in the uh, some uh, port area in America. To, uh, then I would think we are still probably struggling. You see, the point I want to make here is I'm convinced that we as a human being or most of us, or some of us, choose not to help others. As these people, like I just said to you, there are enough poverty here. Well, it, so it depends. Those people are reflection, you know, reflect the kind of people. That's, that's what I want to hear. Because I, I'm struggling I, I, to see I, that I, these, I these people are making money, keeping money away, may, do not pay salaries. Because when you look at the situation, to a marriage I, I, I hope somebody can make a law against the non-payment of salaries in Nigeria. Um, and, and if you're, you're a CEO or, you know, if, you're a, if, we, if we're talking about the, the civil service, for instance, I think there should be a law against that. And I hope that, that any it, governor that is, has no ability that, that no, cannot no, not, not pay the ability, salaries. Because I believe they all have the or ability. Or any company. You know, they're, they're just a purposeful, because, I, you know, there is a, for some of them, it's done on purpose. It's, it's, it's done on purpose? It's done, oh. you know, it's done with the, I've, I've heard of stories of, you know, situations where they would just take the money and put it in some high interest account. Why will you do for that? For instance. Why will a person do that? <laughs> because they can benefit. Why would the, the, the um, boss of Morrison do that? Or well, Tesco. We're, we're, but we're not speaking of the boss of Morris and the Tesco in the UK because you dare not withhold the, my salary. How? Or, or, you know, because, you know. Wages they, they, must be paid. It, it must be paid. Mm. And if you withhold it, I have a right to take you to court, um, you know, for you failing to keep your obligation for keeping your end of the contract. But, but I'm told, I'm told that we have all these laws. We have all these rules. We have these regulations. <laughs> We Why have. are they not working your country, my country? Well, I, first and foremost, we do have them. Number two, um, w the people do not um, demand accountability. Who are these people? Citizens. Citizens need to demand. You're talking of the bastardized, the people that have been bastardized? 
But that doesn't mean they can't stand up for themselves, oh, does it? Hello. If if uh, if you are deprived, I well, I, I just I just said to you about the psychology of us about our psychology and what has happened to us over the years as to why we are where we are. And you said you disagree with me. But now you you're saying you're saying to me I'm really worried. That, <laughs> I'm genuinely worried. Now you now you say yeah. to me that you know um, if they're bastardized, then it's um, it's a it's a problem for them to be able to get on up. On, uh, on a more problematic thinking, mm -hmm. critical thinking. And again, I, I want to look at the camera and say, I am not being honestly uh, unreasonable, but I just want to ask you, mm -hmm. if you are to be a wife of one of the governors that uh, uh, go to uh, congregate in Kano, and your, the, the government of your husband has not been paying salary the last 20 something months or even one month, two, three, three months. And now you say, oh, let's just, we're going to a wedding of one of our, one of our. Uh, well, going to a wedding. Paying not only millions, billions, billions and whatever. And what, what, what's your take on that? How would you feel as a mother of other, other people's wife that uh, their husband work and they don't get paid and you now want to go to a place? Genuinely, this is serious matter. It's nothing to do with politics, but I'm just looking at you in the eye and say, "Yeah, you happen to be wife of one of these governors." What will you say? What will you be saying to your husband? Well, you know, as you said, if, <laughs> and I'm not. Um, but I think, you know, I don't. I don't think that any man that I would be married to would be able to operate in that manner um, with me being Hopefully aware. Not. No, I, I don't, I don't, I can't, I don't, I don't think it should, you know, we'll be, we would have to have a conversation about, you know, why are people not being paid and, and, and all of that. I, I don't think I would go and not ask or not discuss or not want to know why or not find a way to say something has to be done. Um, I certainly wouldn't go without, you know, that whether it was my business or not, because it reflects not just on one person, but it reflects on all of us. So is, is it again, I'm sorry, I, I need to go a little bit further. I, isn't it this uh, 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 an argument for people do not care about other people? Because I, I don't know where the joy will be coming, will be flowing from my body that I'll be attending, I'm a CEO or there are, and, there and salaries are not being paid for workers. I, I think there are, I think it's more than, it's not just, it's not a case of people do not care. I think it's a matter of understanding the impact of your action. Um, in Nigeria, we do mm. not um, sort of, things are not, into, they, we, we don't look at them in the relational manner that they operate or they occur in. So for instance, you know, we, we complain about the fact that there's no money in circulation, there's no money. Mm. But in order for us to have money, there has to be, it has to circulate. Now, if as a worker, you are not paying me for months on end, how then do I support the bread seller's business? By, because I won't be able to afford their bread. Mm. Or perhaps the man in the cubicle that's selling tomato and sugar, I won't be able to mm. purchase any of those things. The woman that, you know, sells dry fish, the big, the, the big stores, for instance, that are operating and employing people, um, your, your, your shop rights and co, I won't be able to shop there. And that is because you haven't paid me. So if I don't get paid as a civil servant or as whatever executive, you, do, you know, for three months I'm not paid, for six months I'm not paid, for a year and so on, and we're not paid, how then do I pay my transport to get to work? So those who work within the trans transport industry are losing my, the trade because they can't earn money from me because I, I don't, you haven't paid me. Um, as I've mentioned there, those who you know, are in the food industry, they can't earn money from me because you haven't paid me. Those who are in the clothing, the hairdressers, mm. you know, w the needs of the children, whatever, the home, you, you, you know, wh where we're at, we pay for our lights and all of that. How do I pay the light bills and whatever else I need if I have not been paid? So you see the failure. 
for, the, for you paying me my salary goes beyond just you not paying me as an in, a singular individual. Pays, you know, it affects the society at large and it affects the economy of that state. You know, because if I have money to spend, the more I have to spend, the more all of these areas that I've mentioned are going to benefit. benefit. And if they can benefit, maybe they can employ more people. And if they can employ more people, um, you know, we will not have um, unemployment, uh, perhaps at the same rate that we do. So I, I, my observation is that they don't sort of l interlink things in the manner that it actually occurs. So it's just a case of, you know, they haven't paid salaries and what is the big deal? And, and, and that's, there lies the, lies the problem. How, before, before I leave this area, why is this happening? I want you to understand it. I mean, why is this happening? And why are the people so resilient? Why are the people not complaining? Well, like I said, I said earlier, it's because the citizens are not demanding. Um, it's happening despite the, all the list of these pains you just well, enumerated. They too are not aware of the impact that they are hungry. Well, that their, hunger, their husbands hunger, do not bring salary home. Hunger is their one children are not fed. Is that what you're saying? Um, no, hunger is one thing. Understanding the complete impact of my salary not arriving on time is a different matter. Now, you know, you, 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 the, your question there was, was why is it happening? Mm. It's happening because I think it's gone on for generations. It's gone on for a long time. Um, it's gone on for decades on end and nobody's, there's, not, there's, there's never been any real challenge. There's never been any real stand up that says this is unacceptable and, and should not be allowed. Um, there's never been any real complaint from the citizens. They've all just sort of, you know, either borrowed or begged or, you know, done whatever was they felt they needed to do. To, some would still get ready and turn up at work because in their psyche, it is better for them to turn up than not to have anything to do. So whether or not they're being paid for, I think I, I watched something um, recently um, on, on, um, on, on one of the news st um, channels, I think it was on either TVC or Channel News, um, and this was in River State, and the university lecturers, the contractors, were actually making a demand on the governor to pay them because they are saying they hadn't been paid for quite some time, over a year. Um, and they were having to publicly demand you know, that, that they be paid. This is a this is a familiar story within the Nigerian At what time society. should we start complaining? Well, it shouldn't happen at all. Once it's happening within a, if it happens in a month, there needs to be some form of explanation um, as to why it happened, and there needs to be an understanding that you know by the so 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 date you're likely you're going to get your money. It shouldn't just be left ignored, and you know be, things do happen. You know, when we're, when we're speaking of companies, for instance, they do go through periods where sometimes the cash flow is not there. But that, if that is a continuous thing, then you should no longer be in business. But sometimes the companies are also suffering because their contractors, for instance, their clientele are not paying up. Again, why? Who are their clientele? It just, you know, goes on. So I don't, it, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be allowed to, to in the first place. fester on um, in the first place, no. I'm sorry, it's not all this gloomy or bad news, but it's just things that bothers me as a, as a human being and uh, uh, as, uh, as a Nigerian. I, I think the labor union, on, uh, you know, are, are responsible. Again, they, they are another, they have failed their members because they're not doing enough to hold those responsible accountable. It's another area I want to take you as a mother, and as, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm being serious, you know. And when, when you have, Am I here in my capacity <laughs> as a mother today? <laughs> when you have a situation mm. where um, young girls from part of the country mm -hmm. are saying to their friends, to anybody, say anything but Nigeria, I'm going to go on the, this scary journey to Libya that they, they eventually even know that they're going to get, uh, they're going to be, to be yeah. sold. And in Libya is a human being for sale. And most of these people, of course, they're from different countries. 
how do you feel? What do you think? You know? it's, it's heartbreaking. It's, um, it's extremely heartbreaking, you know, what, what we're seeing happening to Nigerians in Libya and indeed other Africans in Libya. But once again, it goes back to the African authorities. They continue to fail their people. This, this, all of these situations are wake-up calls at any given time that they happen. Mm. You would expect a government to sit up and say, right, what do we do? Um, you know, because this, this is uh, the, the adverse impact on our people. It's not acceptable. But, um, but unfortunately, we don't have um, that kind of, we don't have those types of governments that, uh, that, that demonstrate, you know, that, that consideration for their citizens. Hmm. Well, it has been said in the, in the uh, different, for a uh, different time at different places in the country that um, there is a need that if we have been doing the same thing the last 57 years and we're not getting any uh, kind of a reasonable results, then we should probably sit down and start thinking of moving the chair or moving the table mm -hmm. or you know what we've been doing. What exactly have we been doing that we're not doing right? Do, do you, are you one of those people that believe we should restructure or we should just continue doing what we are doing? There's absolutely a need for restructure, for restructuring. There is absolutely a, a, a need to sit down and have a conversation. But it shouldn't be lip service to these things because we're, we're, we're speaking here of people that are, are, are very hurt, um, that are marginalized, and, and, that, and, and by and large, to a large extent, um, they, they've suffered considerably. And I think, you know, we, 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 we've been paying lip service and playing with lives um, within the Nigerian society. And it's a shame because I think, I actually believe that restructuring is a good thing. I actually believe that um, if we were to restructure as a nation, we will be stronger. As a nation, we can develop better. Because nothing beats um, inspiration. So, so just imagine if we could restructure and everybody is operating, maybe not optimally, but, but to, a, to a degree they're operating by their strengths. They're operating by what they know. It can only serve to inspire another region of the country to want to do better, to emulate, to develop, to grow, to, you know, but at the moment, we have this seemingly impossible... A kind um, of a contraption? Impossible contraption, that's what I was going to say. Um, that it's unfortunate because it's, it's, um, it's holding us back. It's, it's become um, a huge problem. And, on, and again, again, you know. You see, nothing in Nigeria will ever change until the day the Nigerian people say, hey, enough is enough. Nobody's going to come in and do that for Nigeria. It's going to take the citizens of Nigeria. It's going to take everybody, as I've always said, um, you know, being, first of all, we need to be sincere about what we want. And we need to be honest. And then we need to speak with one voice and not do it because somebody's paying us, not stand up because, you know, um, you think you're going to get something for you. But you stand up because you understand what is required. You understand that if I do not stand up, what will happen to me or to, the, to my family or to the next generation? Until Nigerians recognize that the responsibility for their change, for themselves, lies with them, it's in their hands, it's up to them, it's never going to happen. Because in every area of our society, every area of our failings or problems, it's simply because Nigerians have not said, why? Who? They've not, they've not said it. They've kept quiet. You know, we, we see happening across Africa. We saw, you know, um, this year we saw Jacob Zuma had to leave office. Initially, you know, he was very comfortable. 
Ramaphosa had said to him when that vote of no confidence had come in and all of that, when he, had, you know, he was no longer the leader of the party, Ramaphosa had said, I am not going to force you out because I'm not going to humiliate you. And he also made that public. So for, for, for Zuma, he was sitting comfortably because uh, next year is when they're going to have their election. So what is the fuss? But the South African people said, no, we do not want to continue with you as our president. We want you out. When the South Africans took to the streets, Ramaphosa and co had no choice within the ANC but to have this conversation with him because it now became, well, what do we do? We can't continue to allow you to continue. The nation is boiling up. So he had to go. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw a situation in Zimbabwe, forgive me. Mm. You know, as I said then, Robert Mugabe was, as far as I'm concerned, he was just preparing his own exit. He wanted to do it his way, on his terms. So, you know, and, and he, according to his plans. But before too long, the people of Zimbabwe said, no, you can't continue to have it on your terms. Once again, they took to the streets. Mm. Priscilla, uh, what played up in uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa, there is a classic difference. And I'm looking at uh, the situation in Nigeria because the, the difference between Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Nigeria is uh, we're looking at uh, the, the party, the political group, the party institution where the ANC mm -hmm. uh, is more or less is the is the most strongest part of the people. The people adhere to rules and regulation of ANC. The same thing with Z uh, uh, the, the, the party. The ZANU-PF in, in yeah. Zimbabwe. Yeah, the, the party, the, 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 these two countries have very structured political parties, very powerful. Well, Unlike in our country, do you want to compare to our viewers the, the, the structure of political party in these two countries? and the political party's settings in Nigeria? Well, it's not the settings per se, because, you know, it's about the people, it's the power of the people. The people put every and any president there. Mm. You know, the people can decide, we have had enough of you, and we are asking you to leave. It doesn't mean that you don't have a constitution. constitution. It doesn't mean to say that they are going contrary. The, what is the, the power that the people reserve or that they have at their disposal, it's beyond that. But I think what um, perhaps made it work more so is the fact that we didn't have security agencies in South Africa and in Zimbabwe um, firing blank bullets, for instance, or and the um, people. tear gassing um, the ordinary uh, people when they, when they gathered. They respected their rights to protest. They respected we their do have rights that also in Nigeria. to stand. We don't often have that. Um, you know, what, what you tend to see when people go out, to, when, when there's a protest, is you sooner or later you hear of the situations where the security agencies will be out, um, either to tear gas or to, you know, in order to disperse the protest. Um, it's hardly a situation... Remember when they were planning the huge mass protest sometime last year um, that was to be Operation led? Operation Block the Na uh, National Assembly, or which one, or the subsidy? Um, I think it was against the subsidy. It was to be led yeah. by um, Idiaba. And unfortunately, before, a few days beforehand, he was now making an announcement to say, you know, he was no longer going to lead the protest. What happened there? I, I wanted to say that. Sorry to interject. <laughs> I wanted to say that because it's also, I noticed that uh, uh, other countries in Africa or in other parts of the world, it is the leader in, in Mexico, in, you know, in Brazil, it's, it is the leader of the people who wants to effect the change. They're always at the forefront. We will never have people like Wale Inka. We will never have, uh, we will never have people of importance leading like you just said now we will not have people leading the protest because they don't want to is it probably they don't want to get killed or something like that? i don't know I, I don't think it's because they don't want to get killed per se i couldn't i could i don't know what their personal reasons are um and i can't speak for them as to why they wouldn't 
you know, take the stand. But as one that is looking in, perhaps they're not as affected. So oh, because they're not affected. It's possible. They're not as affected. And they, once they their could, family has settled, they, their children have, uh, you know, good opportunity to have a good job and well, that kind of thing. As I said, How I, can they be bothered? I, as I said, I don't know what their personal reasons are as to why they, those individuals that you've mentioned. Um, I know that, you know, Shinka had done it, you know, previously um, in the past. But would he say he's, he's too old now, maybe? Um, I, I don't know what their reasons are um, why, as to why they won't lead. But having said that, we're said to be, you know, over a hundred and... 50. I like to stop at 150 million because I don't actually agree with the 100. I don't think the 180 million is quite right. Thank you but, for taking me now to census because that is very another. Yeah, but let, we've let's never just been counted before. let's just say let's stop at 150. I will million. agree with you. And then um, are, you, are we saying that we can't find individuals within that can lead these these protests or or that can take a stand and you know be followed? has a lot to do with, you know, um, with our priorities. I'm, I'm um, emphasizing this because I genuinely want to say to you and also say to our viewers that... Uh, I know a lot of people watching will be saying, well, why don't you go and lead the protest? Well, <laughs> if I'm giving me the chance, why not? Is you can't Who should one. give you the chance? Uh, exactly. That, it, 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 and that's why I said it is a case of uh, uh, we still display that uh, it has to be me, me and I or myself. And once I'm comfortable with uh, my immediate family, I do not care about others. It, because in different climes, you see people that their children got killed or something happened to their family, and they come out wailing and crying and say, and you ask them, why are they crying? And they say, because I don't want it to happen to, to somebody happen else. To somebody else. Oh, absolutely. We don't, we don't have that. Well, I don't think we don't. I, I think, you know, we, we, we possess... <laughs> just like as everybody else around the world we possess all of those wonderful gifts and abilities but i, I think that you know um, the, the problem here mm. is that when it comes to we're very tunnel visioned that's one of our biggest problems we don't look at things for the greater good or for the greater benefit of oh. all we tend to look at as you said you know the it's the me factor and it's when we get from the me factor to the we factor to us, then we will certainly... We, we will, will start flying. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Priscilla, because of time, I have three more questions. Which I'm okay, let's go I'm through very them. quickly. Uh, I'm going to rush them quickly. Now, um, grassroots. How do you want the grassroots to start participating? And uh, also, when the 2019 election is coming up, one second. Oh, so grassroots. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. Grassroots. I mean, I think, you know, after the 2015 elections, one of the things that um, I heard, um, you know, the, the INEC chairman at the time, mm. um, Jaga said, was that it, what was he spoke about what was lacking in Nigeria. And he spoke about the fact that um, voters education, political education was necessary. Um, I still believe that needs to be done. Grassroots level, city level, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, participation. They will participate if they, if they, you know, if they're encouraged to do so. The the current uh, National Assembly, you know, they the the they're the most powerful. They're the most everything because they believe whatever they legislate on has to be uh, uh, implemented or executed by the executive. Well, it's like that for every. You know, so and uh, that's why they uh, they do not complain about uh, all the opulence, affluence they enjoy. Um, what do you think? Do you think they're doing a good job in the circumstances? Oh, that, uh, that's such a, a, a question that, you know, it's a broad question. I think that in some areas, I, I certainly, um, I was very, very pleased in, you know, that when the conversation was started by the Senate president, that they need to look at those who had served at state level um, as governors, and they became ministers, and then they became senators or whatever it is, and they're 
you know, collecting pensions for all of those in about seven places as they go along. Um, I, I like the fact that he's raised that particular issue, um, and I would, and I and I look forward to them looking into it and and stopping that because that's draining the nation. Uh, I, I, a lot of people will be asking me. See, this is a wonderful opportunity to ask uh, my guest. Uh, she's so savvy in media, in <laughs> politics, in and, uh, and they will say, uh, why is she not uh, at the heart of the uh, uh, business of governance? Why is she not participating? So, do you have any political ambition? Do you want to? Right now, I don't. Why not? Because I, I think it's better for me to be out here. I, I like to be out here personally. I think I, I, I will be more effective. I am more effective out here than I will be being within um, that system. Uh, well, I, I, I will agree with you and I'll tell you why. <laughs> By 31st of this month, I will have been around for 48 years. It's going to be very, very difficult for me. 48 years in Europe now go back home and then start not that I do not want but 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 having said that you know as I said earlier you are still very much a spring chicken it's not as though um, you thank know. you <laughs> you see, like, I want to uh, uh, unfortunately I know but you know we, we always have two hours to to talk on you decide yeah. and it's never enough yeah. so I could take you on and on and on and on oh my god but our hour is over already uh, yes no that's, we that's must do a continuation <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely. We must I have a done that with uh, one of our other colleagues. He's mm. been here twice. I will definitely going to bring you back again and again. Thank you. Now uh, it's been my pleasure. I want to thank you very much for coming. Unfortunately, we started uh, because of technical issues. Yes. We started uh, an hour late, uh, but next time hopefully we will start exactly the time advertised. Uh, I want to thank you very much for giving me the time because, I, like I said from my intro. You are so busy. You have like everywhere. You service in about three major television stations <laughs> now. And for Otumba to have the opportunity, I appreciate you a lot. Thank oh. you very much for coming. And I hope next time around we'll be having more time to talk. So Otumba, it's, it's been, been a, a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure to be here. Thank you Thank for you having me. Thank you. And I look forward to coming back. Thank you. Last decade of your Bodo Nigeria, Bedroom Magazine. This Nadi Obonga Magazine, where the Nyana about our artists, them, musician, and other Obonga people, them for your Bodo Nigeria, and for Bodo Nyubo, Bedroom Magazine. They're fine, clean, and also they're very, very attractive. Bedroom Magazine, not the first online Nigerian entertainment magazine for Bodo UK. Jena wedding ceremony, seminar, birthday party, naming ceremony, housewarming ceremony, advertisement, etc., etc. Bedroom Magazine, go GCD through live story of Obonga celebrities, them. For we society, oh yeah, go buy your own bedroom magazine. Make you know about Yadura Esther Bimbola Jai Pakasumu and many more. You fit to get your own copy for Ikeja, Oshodi, Lagos Island, and many places. I'll be making enter our website on top www.bedumagazine.com or bedumagazine at gmail.com. I'll be meeting Green Green them on top 080 39715126. The Bedou Magazine, the Obonga Magazine, where they carry people to the next level. Magazine.